Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and today on our show we have Katherine McLaughlin. Katherine has been a sexuality educator and trainer for many years. She worked for 22 years at Planned Parenthood of Northern New England, and now she has her own business, Elevatus Training, and that specializes in sexuality education for people with developmental disabilities. So we are here today with Katherine. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here, Catherine. Thanks. And you've actually worked quite a bit in the area with your community education mm -hmm. um, workshops that you did with Planned Parenthood over the years, going back now almost 30 years. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I started there pretty much right out of college yep. and uh, worked in the health center and then became a community educator mm -hmm. trainer for mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you were doing the community education, you would go out into the field to different, not just schools, but organizations as well, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and I think uh, you might remember that we did prison work mm -hmm. and worked with parents on how to talk to their kids about sexuality, mm -hmm. as well as going to high schools, middle schools, mm -hmm. elementary schools. Yep, yep. yep. And um, have you found, having been in the business, so to speak, for, <laughs> for this number of years, that sex education has changed a lot? Uh, not really. And, you know, I think about my own experience mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe it was puberty education, boys separate from the girls mm -hmm. in fifth grade, and then maybe a little bit in eighth grade, or, and then maybe some in 10th grade. Or, it, it's really very similar to what I received in uh -huh. the 70s. Um, so we haven't really done much more than that. Yeah. Um, and the only difference I see now is that they're, they, you know, Abstinence only is a piece of the education, which wasn't in the 70s. It was you mean that's that's being taught now? Yeah. In st and it wasn't back then? It wasn't back then. Oh. Right, right, right. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you think about, you know, sort of the 60s and more progressiveness, yeah. you know, yeah. and free to be you and me and all those <laughs> things. Right, and that was really before sexually transmitted diseases or infections right. were on or the HIV radar. and yeah, that's right, that's right. exactly. It's very different. Mm -hmm. So I, th I, I do think that certainly in terms of my education, which was less than what you got, right. um, the whole idea of STDs or protection you know, was, was not an, even on the radar mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and or an option. Mm -hmm. until right. the late, late 60s. Right, right. Um, and so uh, one of the things that, that you said that I thought was really interesting is that, um, you know, we don't have a lot of conversations about sexuality, uh, public or private, really. And, um, and, and what you said was, we address sex only when it's a problem, and it's only a problem when it's our problem, which I think is really sort of a doorway into what you're doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, what I was referring to is that we don't, we're not really proactive mm -hmm. and comprehensive and um, thinking about sexuality in a positive way, mm -hmm. and um, we're much more fear-based. Um, there's a problem, so then we, then we ask people to come in and do training to fix the problem. Yeah, right. Um, so we don't do, you know, yeah, we're sort of more reactive than mm -hmm. responsive. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the tips I always give parents is, don't react, respond. Yes. And I think as a culture, we react more yes. to it rather than just respond. Um, and, and know that it's a healthy, normal part of people's lives mm -hmm. and um, you know, approaching it that way rather mm -hmm. than this problem that we need to be That's worried right. about and anxious about. And I think it's a problem because it hasn't been addressed until, as you said, it, it, until it is a problem. Right, yeah, right, yeah. So right. it's not part of the whole education of the person. Um, right. And how would you define a good, edu a good sexual education? Yeah, I would say that it is um, sex positive. Mm -hmm. It is inclusive mm -hmm. of all sexual orientations, gender identities. I would say it's responsive and not reactive. Mm -hmm. um, it would be, I think there's a lot around, you know, respecting young people, anyone, any yes. population. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that everyone is a sexual being, mm -hmm. not just the celebrities. Um, so knowing that everyone is, so all populations are included in the conversations. Right. Um, rather than just the celebrities or the sexy people. We see the sexualized culture and then we think that means that people are more sexually active. Mm. So I'll, I'll hear that a lot from 
um, parents and professionals. Well, you know, kids these days, they're just, they're having sex younger and younger. And actually research shows that they're not. They're Is that actually, true? Uh -huh. Yeah, they're waiting longer. And if they do, they use protection. Now there's still issues, but yeah. we, we see this overly sexualized culture and we think that that means that everyone's having sex. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, in the last 10 years, the, the statistics are better um, than they used to be. Oh, that's Teen pregnancy is, is, is down, is down uh -huh. um, and has been pretty much staying down for really? quite a while. Uh -huh. So, but we think it's worse than it yeah. was. But the statistics are showing that something's working and one would think that it would be education more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And yeah. access, mm -hmm. you know, to emergency contraception, mm -hmm. things like right. that. Yeah. So you spent these 22 years of Planned Parenthood and mm -hmm. I think that actually while you were still working there, you started focusing on disabilities, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. So how did you get there? I think it was a few different pieces yes. to that puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, Early on when I was at Planned Parenthood, I had a spinal cord injury, mm -hmm. and I use a wheelchair now, and um, I think that gave me a whole new awareness yes. about oh, disability and, and my own interactions with people and mm -hmm. assumptions people made about me you know, brought on a lot of awareness of, of this population and how um, people assume certain things like they're not sexual and um, all that. So that, I think that piece of having this personal experience um, I also did some work in Siberia with people with uh, physical disabilities, so that was an opportunity. So I had an opportunity to talk about sexuality and disability yes. um, internationally. Wow. Um, and that was with Planned Parenthood? Yep. That, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and then I, we also became professional trainers at Planned Parenthood, and people started asking for this, mm -hmm. in particular sexuality and developmental mm -hmm. disability. So um, I think all those pieces, you know, mm -hmm. the personal experience and having some work experience and then the community asking for these types of trainings. And I started to develop these trainings mm -hmm. and, um, and then eventually wrote a curriculum on sexuality and developmental disability. That's, that's a big deal it, to have written a curriculum. Yes. And it came out of all of the experiences that you had been having. Yeah, but it was also a partnership with Green Mountain Self Advocates uh -huh. in Vermont. Yeah. Um, and a local community developmental disability agency in, mm -hmm. in Middlebury, mm -hmm. um, and Planned Parenthood. And I did most of the writing, but they did more around um, creating the handouts and things so they were accessible to mm -hmm. people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing with the curriculum that um, makes it really unique is that it's designed to be team taught between someone with a developmental disability and a professional. Mm -hmm. um, so it's well scripted and um, in the process of the partnership with Green Mountain Self Advocates and the agency, we had people with disabilities review it, we had people, teams field test the, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, there's a saying, and I'm not sure if it's specific to Green Mountain Self Advocates or just self advocacy in general, but nothing about us without us. Mm -hmm. um, and so the project was used that motto, you know, yeah. to include people with disabilities uh -huh. in the creation and the teaching of yeah. sexuality. Can you give us a picture of what that's like? Were you like sitting down at a table with people with various kinds of disabilities, uh -huh. is that right? Yeah. And then team uh, professionals who were working with you. Yeah. And so what, what was the back and forth like? Yeah, um, so I would say that um, the, the group that we were working with are part of Green Mountain Self Advocates, so they're pretty mm -hmm. outspoken, mm -hmm. you know, and they are good at saying what they think, and um, so they reviewed everything, and really the professionals were in the background at that point. Um, when they're team teaching, I mean, one of the struggles is people worry that the professional is going to do all the teaching and then the person with a disability is going to pass everything out, you know, yeah, be the right, helper, right? right? So how do we make it so that it's equal? Yeah. Um, and some people have the person with a disability teaching most of it, and they're more of the support. So it, it, it kind of depends on the, the situation. So the field testing, we weren't, I didn't experience that. Uh -huh. And they brought back you know, information from when they team taught. Um, that must have been an amazing experience for people with disabilities to be teaching these programs. Mm -hmm. right? right. How empowering. Peer education models, and yes. you know, they are more effective, right? Mm -hmm. So people understand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, feel as if it's, it's come, you know, yeah, you're like a peer rather than a professional mm -hmm. teaching you mm -hmm. this information. And what kind of feedback have you gotten back from the people with disabilities who have gone through this program? 
well, they're so appreciative. Yeah. Um, you know, finally somebody's talking mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. and including them. Mm -hmm. uh, in a w and they're and they're taught in a way that works for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many people with disabilities talk about being in a mainstream sexuality or health class. Mm -hmm. um, so one piece of this is that they, um, some of them have been taken out during the sexuality unit. Oh, wow. Right. So they actually remove them. Like, there's a message, right? You don't need this. You're not a sexual uh -huh. being. Uh -huh. um, so there's that. But also, um, the way it's taught may not work for someone with a disability. Mm -hmm. They need things to be more concrete. Mm -hmm. They need more graphic. Mm -hmm. um, they need you know, graphic representation. They, um, they need it at a slower pace. Yes. They need different topics than the general population might need. So you know, for, I think for a lot of them it was like, finally, yeah. finally, yeah. someone's talking to me in a way that I can understand and learn and, and treating me like a sexual being. Yes, and information that, you know, they not only might they not have had that information, but didn't know that they, that, that could be part of their lives right. as well. Right, right. And sure. I would think that your trainers would have to be really nimble in terms of getting a group of people together with very different, as I said, different kinds of disabilities and knowing the level of understanding and comprehension. Yeah, and that's that's hard for anybody yeah. um, when you have a range of abilities mm -hmm. um, in a class. So it's really hard to know mm -hmm. uh, who to teach to and mm -hmm. who's getting it and who's not. Um, so I think a lot of places will try to have people with similar abilities in the classes, uh -huh. um, but that doesn't always work, That's and right. sometimes you have to supplement mm -hmm. um, for somebody with maybe um, more of a disability. Mm -hmm. And have most of uh, your trainers worked with people with disabilities, or are they coming from different kinds of venues? Usually, it's either you know special educators mm -hmm. in a school district, mm -hmm. or it's someone in a developmental disability agency. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of experience working with people with disabilities, yeah. um, but they've just never been able to address sexuality. Mm -hmm. So that tends to be the people that come to trainings. Mm -hmm. The curriculum, one of the, the theme is sexual self-advocacy. Mm -hmm. And um, what a lot of self-advocates say is when they say that they want an, uh, an, an apartment of their own or they want to get a job, people mm -hmm. jump right in and start working on goals and you know, how to get them what they want. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when they say they want a relationship or they want to start dating or something, people get really nervous mm -hmm. and there's silence. And, um, so a lot of the work is around sexual self-advocacy, which for this population also means advocating for what you want, like a, sec a relationship or um, you know, privacy in your group home. Mm -hmm. or, so it's where most people, people without disabilities, there's an assumption that eventually they will be in a relationship. We just sort of assume that. Uh, with someone with a disability, we assume they won't. Yeah. Um, and so they have to advocate for their right to yes. be in a relationship. Yeah. Um, so it's all about speaking up, saying what you need. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of the, the curriculum. It, you know, there's, that's sort of the thread through yeah. the whole curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's speaking up for what you need and want and deserve, but also speaking up in a relationship right, that's as right. well. We talked about changes in sexuality education. Mm -hmm. And have you noticed um, changes mm -hmm. in disability awareness? Mm -hmm over mm -hmm. the years. Right. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think there's um, sort of general disability awareness. Mm -hmm. I think people still, and I always, you know, I think I just said, I said this the other day, um, I forget that people are uncomfortable with disability. I, I think, not that I, I don't have my own discomfort yeah. with other disabilities, yeah. but I forget. So yes, there's more awareness especially around sexuality and sexual abuse prevention, yes. but around just, just sort of general disability, I think there's more awareness because of autism. Mm. I think autism has um, brought to light a lot about disability. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think people with autism often um, are, are sort of more, I mean, this is like such a generalization, but more radical in some ways mm. around, um, so for example, uh, what's recommended is people use people first language. So we say mm -hmm. a person with a disability mm -hmm. versus you know, the disabled I see. or uh -huh. the blind, right? Yep. So a person yep. who's blind. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and some people who have autism, so people with autism, that's how I've been trained, yes. um, want to be called autistic. Oh. Right? So it, it's just, though, I think it's added this whole different yeah. um, 
voice to the disability community. Um, I'm not saying everybody wants to be called autistic, but that's like, you know, I'm taught, I was taught you don't do that. And now people are saying, no, I want that. And, and you think about it like someone, when we think about sexual orientation, yeah. some, you know, people don't say I'm a person who is lesbian. That's right. That's they right. say I'm a lesbian, right? Um, and so there's sort of something about claiming that's your right. label. And identity. As yes, well. exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, it does feel like that's changing some. Yeah. So there's more voice, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's sort of what I'm saying: radical or progressive. Mm -hmm. So over these years, I would think that because you've been so out in the public, um, and you've been out in the public in a wheelchair, and you have been promoting all kinds of various things about disabilities and sexuality, um, that you would, uh, you know, it's part of your life. It's part of you know who you are. Um, but do you still run into that when you go out into public? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, there's a, a lot of sort of stares and people mm -hmm. wondering, and, and even, I don't mean stares like you step up, yes, I mean right, right. Yes. <laughs> stares. Eyeballs, yeah. yeah, eyeball <laughs> stares, yeah. Um, and I think it's curiosity, and also just, you know, if we have these assumptions about people with disabilities, like they're depressed and they never mm. smile and they just, you know, they're confined to a wheelchair mm -hmm. and they have no life, mm -hmm. and then you see somebody out in the world, it's just, it's kind of shocking. And it, mm -hmm. it, it, it um, yeah, it, it jolts your views. Yeah. Um, and so you spend time looking and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, readjusting your beliefs. That's right. Um, but I did have this experience once where I was at a workshop, and um, it was people that worked with people with disabilities, too. And um, we did this survey about how comfortable are you? And um, you know, would you be comfortable having lunch with someone in a wheelchair? Would you be comfortable? These kinds of things. And then we passed them all back in, and then they tallied them up. And there was probably a room of 50 people. And, 50% said they would be uncomfortable having lunch with me. And I just remember feeling like, are you, really? Like, it's that uncomfortable? Yeah. Like, I, I, I forget that. And, yes. um, you know, it was, it was shocking yeah. to me, too. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, so I think there's a sort of, I don't want to offend, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, you know, people will say, well, you, you walk into the room and then they're like, oh, no, 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 you know, and I'm like, really, I know what you mean. It's, you can say walk in front of me uh -huh. or see you later to someone yes. that's blind like the, it doesn't make people oh my god realize right. something right. you know well it, and i think it brings up a really um a really important point is the kind of etiquette that we right. have or mm -hmm. that we have somehow adopted we are all going through that to one degree or another certainly when it comes to um, transgender yeah. and uh, different kinds of, um, of uh, mental health, or the phrase that they're using now is brain health, yeah, which sure. I think is so much healthier um, yeah. and a much better phrase because it encompasses everything right. from autism to schizophrenia to you know everything yep. in between. Yeah. So I think that I think that as our awareness spills, our vocabulary changes, and yes, it has to. Absolutely, and yeah. we struggle. You know, and we you know. we struggle, and it's fast. But I think it all comes back to um, how do we talk about this, mm -hmm. whether it's sexuality or disabilities right. or both, gender or mm -hmm. you know, respond, don't react. Mm -hmm. That's how we need to talk about it, mm -hmm. and that means that we, um, you know, come at it in a positive way. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, if we compare ourselves to other countries that are doing much better in this area than us, um, there's a video that um, was created in Denmark probably 25 years ago, and apparently every fifth grader sees this video. It's animated, all about sexuality and body parts and everything, and you can't get it in a high school in this country. Oh my gosh. Um, I show it in my college classes. Oh, wow. um, and just the messages yeah. are so different mm -hmm. than what we give. Yes. So I, you know, one thing is to just give positive messages yeah. rather than anxious, fear-based messages. Fear -based. So right. just like great question. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to ask questions. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. normal to talk about the, you know, that that's how we have to start looking at it. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like the rest will come, you know, uh -huh. will follow. Yes. Um, yes. And yeah. from my own, my own work, uh, my own children, I remember they'd ask a question or something would come up and I'd say, what's the message I want to give about this? Yes, right. You know, and I want it to be positive. Yes, no matter what. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Even if it's, I don't know the answer and I'll find out, mm -hmm. uh, but really good question, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so 
I think that's sort of the how is being positive yes. and especially as a, a parents, you know, we want to be approachable. Mm -hmm. um, we want people to, we want our kids to come to us. Right, right. And so if we react, they're not going to come to us. That's right. And the fact that, that you are part of, you're part of this world too. You're not just the parent, you know, or you're not just the trainer, or you're not just the educator, you know. Right. This. And for you, I'm sure that for you to be in a wheelchair would certainly uh, level some playing fields with dealing with people. Yeah, I mean, I, what I've heard people say is that, uh, you know, she understands us. Mm. She gets us on a different level. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that, that helps. Mm -hmm. um, give me some street cred. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so to speak, yeah. yeah. There's been a l more national awareness. NPR mm. had a focus on sexual abuse yep. uh, for those with developmental disabilities. Yeah, the whole series was called The Hidden Epidemic that we just, people just don't know about it. Yeah. Um, in the field, you know about it, but the general population doesn't know right. about it. So it was quite, um, quite a shock for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that one of the things is we give messages to people with disabilities like you're not sexual, you're oversexed might be another one that you get, uh, but also you're going to be abused is another message that um, we um, give. And to, yeah, that's a piece of it, but let's start with the positive and then talk about how that could happen yes. and how to prevent yes. it. But we kind of come in to it that way right. with sexual abuse. Yeah. So some people think that's all people with disabilities need is sexual abuse prevention instead of a broader sexuality. Yes, right, right, because that's getting the headlines for one thing. Right, And that's yeah. the loudest, most dramatic thing that's going on. Right, yeah. right. And people are reactive. Exactly, <laughs> <Right>? see? <laughs> there it We're is again. Reactive. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So let's talk a little bit about Elevatus. Yeah. And, um, and how you came to, to have your own business. Yeah. So um, after Planned Parenthood, I had just a small consulting business, and I taught classes at Keene State College, mm -hmm. human sexuality, health and wellness, through, through the health science department. Um, and so it was this sort of side thing, and I would do some workshops here and there, and I, ha and I had the curriculum. Planned Parenthood gave me the curriculum oh, mm -hmm. um, when I left. So I was selling the curriculum, doing some training. And then... Um, about a year ago, well, actually, a couple of years ago, I teamed up with Helene Iris, who was a friend and also a business coach, and mm. um, she know, you know, she's bookkeeping. She didn't, she knows how to do it all, um, and she started helping me market and get the word out more, uh -huh. and the business just really started to grow, and so we decided to go full time, mm -hmm. the two of us, uh, with Elevatus Training. So in the last almost year. Uh, we've renamed the company, we, we did our website, mm -hmm. we revised the curriculum, mm -hmm. redesigned it so it's a little more updated. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so we've done a lot of work with that. Um, I, there's also another person who does social media, mm -hmm. Lindsay Austin Davis in Keene, so she does all of our social media. And Yay, right. Yeah, right. so I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so it's really the three of us. Yeah. Um, and Lindsay's part, you know, part time, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Helene and I are full time. Yeah. And um, you know, the, the idea with Elevatus was this idea of sort of elevating the status of everyone mm -hmm. and sort of bringing people up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's how we came up with the name. Yeah, that's um, a good name. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. How does that feel to have your own business going on with it? Oh, it feels great. Uh, you know, there's, um, yeah, I mean, there's. First of all, I love teaching and uh -huh. creating educational yeah. materials and trainings. So like, that's really fun yeah. in and of itself. Um, it also has a mission, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and also there's this whole network of people that are getting trained and getting more comfortable and helping people with disabilities. But in some ways, it almost seems like it, help, it helps everyone, you know? It, the trainer themselves That's are right. learning, and then they talk to their own children, yep. and then they talk to, you know. So it, it feels like it's really changing the culture, and yes. that's really exciting. And yeah. I work from home, yeah. Yeah. and I travel every couple of weeks. Oh, um, wow. So that, that can get a little tiring, but it's yeah. fun, and um, I don't have to work, deal with any office politics or uh -huh. anything. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot to be said for that. And you're really, um, you know, looking, looking back at, you know, everything that you've done, I mean, you've, you've become uh, a real connector 
you know, mm. as they say now, I mean, that now that's almost a job. <laughs> right, a connector, right, right. They're influencers yes. and connectors. And that, yeah. but, um, but to open up these conversations, which you're doing, and uh, there aren't many businesses like this. No, no. Right? No. And so for you to be able to uh, take all that you've gleaned over, you know, almost 30 years mm -hmm. now, right, mm -hmm. into the public, and that's how it starts. I mean, when we talk about, you know, change, and we certainly are all looking at places that need some serious change right. in the country, especially, sure. um, you know, to head, to start at, in a really wholesome, healthy place mm -hmm. and bring that information to a group of people, to some, to a community of whatever kind it is. And then also for you to be able to travel with it, you know, because mm -hmm. you're, you're going to all kinds of places across the country, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and connect, like you said, the connector, yeah. connecting people. So, yes. some, so someone in Texas at the Developmental Disability Council mm -hmm. reaches out, mm -hmm. and then I connect them with the person at the Michigan Developmental right. Disability Council. And, right. um, it's also really interesting to see just the, the, the different personalities or cultures of each state too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. That's right. So That's right. Uh, here we are in New England and Vermont, New Hampshire, and there's a lot of progressive thinking about sexuality mm -hmm. and other parts of the country, not so much. Not so much. So how do I work in a community or a state that has a lot of resistance? Yes. Um, so I'm learning a lot about that. Oh, I'm too. sure. That must be a real challenge. It is, Although, yeah. But you've had, I mean, it, it, I guess going back again to your mission, which seems to be start positive. Yep. You know, right. so if you exactly. start with, if you have that in hand, then you can go out from there. Um, and I just, I did want to say, uh, to the studio or to the audience. We don't have a studio audience. Someday we'll have a studio audience. Oh, that audience. would be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> we can go out in the crowd with a microphone. That's and right. They could ask you questions. Bill I'm Donahue, sure they yeah. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I did want to say that, um, that uh, Elevate's website is really worth taking a look at. Um, there's all kinds of great information, a lot of which Catherine has talked about. But also, um, it gives some questions in the back. I think it's under free materials, uh -huh. I, I, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but if you look through the questions, you know they're challenging for us. You know, even those of uh, those of us who may be all on board um, with sexuality education and sexuality education for people with with developmental disabilities. But I think that, as you say, you go into a state that is not so supportive, and you're challenged all over again. Mm -hmm. you know, right. In a right. Kind of way. Right. And I think it's sort of. Um, I think that's a. a a real thing for each of us to be able to um, realize, oh, okay, there's always, always more to open up to. Yeah, I want to tell a story. Oh, good. Yeah, so um, in one of my trainings, I had um, s people with disabilities sit in a circle and talk about some questions, and then professionals were around the outside, so like, it's called a fishbowl, right? Mm -hmm. So you're listening to mm -hmm. the people talking. And um, one of the staff people came up to me afterwards, and she told this Great story. I use it all the time. She said, um, I do what I always do when I go to a foreign country. I think everyone is going to be so different than me. I'm going to have this culture shock. I'm not going to understand. It's just so different. And then I get there, and I realize everyone's just like me. Mm. And she said that's exactly what happened when she sat down mm -hmm. to listen to people with disabilities talk about sexuality. She said, they're just like me. They want every, you know, just what I want, just like anyone would want. Um, and so I, I just wanted to kind of end with that kind of thinking, well, what would I want? Um, and why wouldn't someone else with a disability want the exact same thing? Yes. And um, so. That's a wonderful thing to come to. Yeah. That's really, that's wonderful. And a wonderful thing to remember whenever you're in a group of people. Right. right? We're so used to being, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah, they're thinking that we're different. Right, yeah. right. And I think the disability movement, they, there's some, I forget the saying, but something like, you laugh because we're different. You think we're different. We laugh because we know we're the same, or something like that. <laughs> that yeah. is good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, Catherine, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, it was great to have you on. Thanks. Really wonderful information. And good. boy, your energy is fabulous for this job. It's so great. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks to all of you for tuning in again today. We will see you next week with another show. Here we are.